Hey there, and welcome to the Hawkridge Systems Pro Tip for Technical Communications. So sometimes you need that photorealistic rendering of a design prior to manufacturing, or perhaps you need a professional rendering to win over that bid. SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional is the right tool for the job, and here are my top three pro tricks. Exporting SOLIDWORKS Motion Studies to Visualize Professional using the SOLIDWORKS Visualize add-in. Using emissive materials to add dramatic motion to your publications and using a 360 camera to produce interactive videos. The first pro trick in this list is to use the SOLIDWORKS Visualize add-in to export a motion study directly into Visualize. This will save time since motion studies can be generated directly from the exploded views using the animation wizard within the SOLIDWORKS motion study timeline. This creates a seamless workflow from exploded views to the motion study, then to Visualize for the photorealism animation rendering. Importing the motion study from SOLIDWORKS is simple. Go to the SOLIDWORKS Visualize tab on the Command Manager and select Export Advanced. Pick which motion study you want to bring into Visualize and press OK. The motion study will begin to process, and once finished, the SOLIDWORKS Visualize program will automatically open with the embedded motion study. All appearances import from SOLIDWORKS to Visualize, so at this point the animation can be rendered to a video. However, applying additional appearances and some camera motions can drastically improve the final video. This brings us to our next trick, which is adding some emissive materials to bring life into the scene. By going to the Library tab, located in the palette, there are several options for different assets. Choose Appearances and navigate to Emissives. Emissive appearance are applied just like any other appearance with a drag and drop onto the model. After applying the appearances, Navigate to the Appearances tab and select the Applied Emissive Material. Here the color and brightness can be adjusted to give the desired effect. To really make the emissive material pop, go to the Camera tab, make sure the current camera is selected, and in the Filter tab of your camera settings is an effect called Bloom. Enable Bloom and adjust the sliders as needed so the image looks the way you want it. Emissive materials is a great way to add realism and make renderings really stand out. Emissives do not project light as much as a custom light, but can add subtle luminosity, casting color onto model surfaces. Last on the list is taking everything we have done so far in this video and using a 360 degree camera to render out an interactive video. To simplify this process, all that is needed for a 360 video is setting the camera type to 360 in the camera settings. A 360 video is created the exact same way as any other video. It's just the camera that's used that makes the difference. For this case, making a 360 video of just the toy truck would not make much sense, since there is nothing to look at behind the camera. Because of this, I imported a model of a room into my project. When creating 360 videos, animate them just as you would any other animation, with the exception of switching the camera type to 360 right before rendering. To do this, go to the Camera tab and make sure the correct camera is selected, and under the General tab, change the type to 360. In the viewport, the camera perspective will appear to change. This is intended. Next, click on Tools at the top of the program and select Render. The Render tab will control the quality of the output. These settings will affect the rendering times dramatically. Since this is a 360 video, we want to click on the checkbox for Adjust for Virtual Reality Playback on social media. This will automatically adjust the size so this video can be supported on platforms such as YouTube. For video, I typically suggest a minimum of 600 passes. For this rendering, I'm going to use Boost so I can continue to use my local computer for other tasks during the rendering. The next tab we want to go to is Animation. Using this section to start the render will produce a video, opposed to an image when using the Render tab. The render will take a bit to process and is completely dependent on the graphics card used on the rendering machine. By implementing these three tricks, we can take the existing SOLIDWORKS motion studies, bring them into Visualize Pro, add appearances and render out the video in professional photorealism quality you can experience with a VR headset, which can set your publications apart from the rest. This video is number three of a three-part video series for SOLIDWORKS Technical Communications. If you enjoyed it, please check out video one and two covering SOLIDWORKS Composer assembly documentation and first article inspection reports using SOLIDWORKS Inspection.